Hi everyone, Chris here again. Going to be doing a weapon overview video for you today. This is going to be about the rifle you see here, AR-15 variant. This is a GMP AEG customized sort of M4. Um, started life as a Sentry. A lot of you probably will have seen me here. The Sentry ver versions from uh, GMP. They usually have uh, a Voltor, sort of an I mod or an E mod stock up here on the buffer tube. And generally you've got a seven inch a replica of the Daniel Defense rail system um, or one of the Daniel Defense rail systems. I can't remember off the top of my head which one it was, uh, but this uh, it's also started life as a, a ten and a half inch barrel version. Um, so I've done, I've done a fair bit of work, changed uh, quite a few things on the rifle. So I'm just going to run through them now, point out point out what's, uh, what I've done to it really. Um, like I say, it's a plain AEG. The good thing about the GMPs is they come with the uh, with uh, a buff tube that enables you to fit a LiPo inside it. So I've got a 7.4 volt uh, 20 C 800 milliamp. Or was it 800? I think it's about a thousand milliamp actually. LiPo just inside the buff tube there. It comes stock with Dean's connectors, which is really good, helps increase your, uh, basically just the whole efficiency of the electrical system, you get less resistance running through the wires. The buttstock here, this is the Magpul original equipment, MOE, MO, whatever you want to call it, stock, adjustable. Uh, this is the Magpul Industries version, got it imported from the States in the flat dark earth. 0.7 inch butt pad. Uh, it's extremely, extremely tight there on the airsoft buffer tube. This is the mil spec stock, extremely tight. It's very, very hard to actually adjust it, but that does mean it's absolutely, there's absolutely no wobble in there. The whole gun will move before I uh, can wobble that stock. Absolutely no movement. As I say, great having the, the LiPo up in the buffer tube there because it means you can put whatever you want on the front. 0.7 inch butt pad, nice and comfortable. The CTR is obviously a nice stock, but the um, the main advantage of the CTR over the MOE is that it has that friction lock, but this stock is so solid anyway, there's not really any much need for it. Sling point, Magpul PTS, ASAP plate. Four AEGs, there's your uh, sling for your one point sling on there. Obviously the, the Magpul slings work with it brilliantly and I've, I've set it up to, uh, to use the adaptable slings, but we'll go into that in a minute. Fits on there very nicely, really secure. Pistol grip from Magpul PTS. MOE again, it's basically a, a whole MOE gun as you'll as you'll notice. Lower receiver, this is the GMP. The, the reason I went for the Sentry is it because GMP, they make good solid guns. And it came with this receiver set straight out of the box. Magpul type lower, Voltor weapon systems, MER1 upper receiver, really high quality. Um, great thing about the Magpul lower, instead of having a trigger guard as a separate piece, it's installed there, it's wider for when you've got large thick gloves on in the cold, and it, um, it fills the gap that you usually get down here, which can get quite painful on, on the, that part of your finger there, when you've got standard trigger guards. Front of the receiver, you've got the sort of cuts here, if you, if you do use that front of the Magwell grip, then that can help. Nice receiver markings there, safe, semi, full auto. Selector is, I must admit, a little bit mushy. It's not, it's not as sort of, it clicks fairly well into place, but it's got a little bit of movement in it. Would have been nice to see slightly better, but it's not bad at all. Nice Magpul trademarks there. Um, the bad lever PTS one, that is purely aesthetic. Obviously it doesn't do, a, doesn't do anything on the AEG. I just like the look of it. Charging handle does operate the fake bolt plate on the other side. Rear backup iron sights. Again, Magpul Industries imported from the States. This is the MBUS Gen 2. Optic wise, just for the sake of the video, I've put the uh, Chinese replica of the Elkan Spectre DR. Four times optic with the doctor red dot on the top there. Really, really. Well, very heavy optics, but really nice clear glass, really nice wide field of view that you get through those. 
The actual Mer one upper is pretty much just for looks. It doesn't really do anything much on an airsoft gun that uh, a standard AR-15 pattern upper receiver wouldn't do for you. Standard magazine catch, single-sided selector. The uh, delta ring, the barrel nut, etc. That's all standard GMP. I'm probably going to switch for a real steel delta ring spring because those are a lot stiffer and they help really securely the handguard in place. MOE handguards, mobile vertical grip, Mo sling attachment point. Again, I imported all these from the States. This is the real stuff. Really, the PTS stuff isn't bad at all, but it's just a little bit more solid plastic that you get with this. It's, it just feels a bit better. Tra nice trademarks on it. Looks really good. The Mo vertical grip, extremely comfortable. You get a nice transition here when your actual when your hand is a uh, when you're holding the gun. Get a really nice, comfortable, smooth surface there for gripping. Gas block, standard um, GMP handguard cap holding that in. Gas block is a King Arms replica of the Voltor gas block slash front sight. So you've got your flip up front sight there, QD sling points. The barrel, this is quite an interesting one now, as you can, a lot of the uh, keen eyed. Players amongst you might notice this is a longer than standard handhold. This is a mid-length gas system, or it replicates the mid-length gas system. Basically, what that means is you've got a 14 and a half inch barrel, which is your standard sort of uh, M4 carbon barrel that you see in airsoft on, on most guns. But the your gas block front side would usually be sort of back around here, a couple of inches behind where it. It is on this barrel. This is the Crusader Tech 14 and a half inch mid-length gas system barrel. Took quite a lot of Dremel work on the inside of the receiver and on the back of the barrel to actually fit that in there, but it's on nice and solid now. Like I say, it moves your, your gas block front sight that little bit further forward, which means you can get a longer hand guard on there, and it means if you you can really if you if you want to reach out, get that cool guy grip, um, which I find helps with the sort of quicker target acquisition and help does help with your accuracy a little bit. KAC triple tap brake or GMP replica of it in terms of flash hider. And uh, that's about that. Mm -hmm. Have a quick look at the other side. Nothing too much of interest on this. It's pretty much uh, just got the little vinyl sticker there, Magpul Industries. You can see the uh, PTS trademarks in there, nicely engraved on that, Voltor trademark, Ford Assist. Um, and yeah, I mean, you can't really see anything much on this side that you can't see from the other side. But it is, it is a nice gun, I'm, I'm quite happy with the way it turned out. Uh, any, um, uh, I can see here I've got a, Got some Magpul PTS T mags, translucent magazines. I'm going to try and run these in a second. Not actually tried them before, so we'll see whether they feed. I know they fit. I've certainly uh, I've fit them in to the gun a few times before. They fit very nicely, but whether they'll they'll uh, they'll feed is a different story. So there we go. That's my uh, Magpul slash GMP mid-length MOE customized AR-15. So as per usual, any. Uh, any gun review won't be won't be uh, really complete without putting some finger on trigger time. So let's uh, let's head outside and uh, put a few BBs through this thing. Okay, so before we start the shooting, I want to do a very quick demo to explain what I was talking about before with regards to the sling points on this weapon. Now, the great thing about the ASAP, as you can see already, is that if I want to switch shoulders, I can do that really really easily using a one point sling and this sling point. What you've got to do easy as that and if you're leaning around cover nice and quick really simple none of your kit gets in your way when you want to switch shoulders with this uh, with a sling point and a one point sling great thing about the magpul slings however is that if you've got a sling point up the front of your weapon you just grab that and there you go on the two point configuration I want to switch put the weapon behind me there we go, and I could go for my pistol if I wanted to, or I don't know, <laughs> do whatever it is you might need to do with your hands.
obviously however I'm not Chris Costa I might share his uh, I might share his first name but as you can see I struggled even to get this slim point transferred across so I'm not nearly as good as him but that is the, uh, the great thing about this uh, combination of the ASAP plate and the MSA or the RSA if you've got here a wrist rail up on the front of your gun but anyway um, as you can probably see already this uh, this particular optic has three actual sighting systems on it you've got the main four times magnification scope going through the center you've got the red dot on top and then you've also got iron sights just here so uh, if you find through the red dot and that happens to go down you just quick twist and there you go and you're on the irons and obviously they're never going to run out of battery or anything so I'm going to put uh, I've got four magazines on me, one, two, three, one in my back pocket. I'm going to try one through the optic here, two through the red dot, and I'm going to try and switch to the iron sights for the last one, and we'll see what happens. I've not got a, a paper target set up downrange because I haven't set the hop on this thing. Um, it's not been, it's not had any sort of time to break in, and I think that would be a bit unfair. Plus, I'm not a very good shot, so I don't think that would be a, a fair summary or a fair review of the actual rifle itself but we'll uh, see how I can manage to get on with the actual parts that I've put onto it externally and how I manage to get along with my reload Semi for the iron sights, see how these do. Clear the gun. There we go. There you have it. I really enjoy it. I like the, uh, the mid-length system. Mohan guards keep it really nice and light, nice and pointable. Really great all-round weapon, 14 and a half inch barrel. You can use that pretty much any much any situation you want. Good range of accuracy for the woodlands, but if you get up close, you can still do all right. So there we have it. Uh, any questions, guys? Please uh, please do put them in the comments. If you want to keep up with the videos that I'm putting on the channel, I will put the URL for the Facebook page that I'm running uh, down in the description as well. And uh, as always, cheers for watching, and I'll see you next time.